Welcome to ANN In Depth. This is another special episode from IATEC in Brazil. That's the Adventist Institute of Technology. If you've never heard of it, it is an amazing place. And today I have Beto with me. Herbert is the full name. Yes. But we'll call you Beto if you don't mind. Of course. Thank you for joining us at ANN In Depth. Thank you. Let's talk about technology. Okay. Um, these facilities here are beautiful. Everyone who comes here is very impressed that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has somewhere like this that technology people can, can work. When did you start working at IATEC? Well, first, uh, we stopped talking about IATEC. At the time, I was working on South America Division headquarters in Brasilia. It was 2014. And then we came to Ortolândia here on 2015 to a small room in this campus of the university. And we started to build this building. And then it was 2015. And that's how things started. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you do here? I'm the CIO of IA Tech. Actually, what does it mean being the CIO? We take care of the operation, the operations, the technical operations of IA Tech. We have a lot of teams doing uh, programming operations and infrastructure operations and security, IT security operations. So the, all the technical teams are under my responsibility. That's what I'm doing. You don't have a CTO, do you? No, actually, it's a little tricky, the CTO and CIO um, position. Uh, in Brazil, we call it, uh, we call it technical director. Mm. It's better than these, these acronyms mm -hmm. because CTO usually is used for a most technical approach and CIO, it's the most um, administrative approach. That's why I'm a kind of CIO and not exactly a CTO. But actually we do both. That's what I thought. Yeah. My, I, I, from your description, it looked like it yeah, was a, yeah, yeah. a collective thing. Why does IATEC exist? IATEC was created to support the mission with technology. Before IATEC, we already had technology in place, but it was not centralized, a not centralized strategy. So iTech was created to like, let me say, organize the strategy of IT. And then we started providing software and infrastructure solutions and support and so on. So you had technology, one software here, another platform there, another approach here, yeah. and it was all over the place. So IATEC yeah. came to become the home of software, the home of technology that would coordinate all of this and yes. integrate all these efforts. Yes. The truth is the necessities has grown very fast and we didn't, we didn't improve this area in, in terms of organization at the same pace. So the church decided to do that, to centralize the strategy. That's why IATEC uh, exists. Actually, in the first moment, we started providing software and infrastructure. But as the years are passing, we are learning on how to serve better the church regarding its own, its real necessities, which is more than software and more than infrastructure. Uh, but it is a strategy of adopting, acquiring, developing, deciding about technology to serve the purposes of the mission and of the church. So iTech is like the, the wise at the right of the king to talk about technology. It's a kind of vision. So it's, it's like a counselor to, to administration like and, and... Okay, so if that's the case, then 
Let me see if I understood this properly. Mm -hmm. In the history of iAttack, which is very short, mm -hmm. it's a very short history so far, <laughs> and you've achieved a lot in these short years. You have infrastructure projects like treasury and, and um, membership and whatever is necessary in terms of infrastructure software for the church to run. Then you have infrastructure proper, hardware, data yes, centers, yes. et cetera, right? yes. uh, that manages these yeah. things. When we talk, when we say infrastructure, I mean, it's interesting what you said, because we have these kind of back office softwares, as you said, treasury and secretariat and so on. And we call it back office software. And we do have infrastructure as servers, networks, security, and so on. And we offer both services. And besides these kind of uh, services, we have another kind of softwares and solutions. For example, uh, educational softwares for the, all the area of education. And the seven me it's a, a software, it's an app directly to the member for offering and so on. And we have Bible plan, for example, it's directly for the church to study the Bible. The portfolio of IA Tech is always growing according the necessities that the church is demanding, you know, that's that's so How the church needs to be very clear about what problems it needs to solve. Yes. Right. So, OK, we have this problem here. And instead of perhaps if I understand what you are presenting properly and correct me if I'm wrong. OK. IATEC is morphing from a house of software into a house of solutions. Technological yes, it's solutions. A very good interpretation. <laughs> okay, yeah. so if if IATEC is becoming a the home of technological solutions, it means that your involvement, you may have a full structure that manages it here, or you may be a consultant to another entity. Now you're in the context of South America. Mm -hmm. Novo Tempo is developing software. Uh, the publishing house is developing software. You have different parts in South America are developing software. But if, if, if this is the, the home of solutions that involve technology, then you can be involved in all of this, even yes. if you don't manage exactly. the product. How is that developing? And how many years do you think it will happen, it will take for that vision to well, solidify? <laughs> I don't know how many years it would take, but when you said, how do I, can, do I manage this? The first word that comes to my mind is integration. Because, okay, Novo Tempo and all the institutions of the church, including unions and even conferences, they have their own developers and their own local necessities. iTech is not positioned to match the small and local necessities and accomplish everything. But we are here to integrate those kind, kind of initiatives and, and, and to, to guarantee that the, the, those data can be accessed and safe. available, safe, and so on. We are a reference, reference. Mm -hmm. of uh, for this kind of approach. In another hand, big solutions that match common necessities for the church, it usually uh, comes to iATech as a as a project, and then yes, we develop or we buy the core of the the solution in the third third party market, and then work on integration or improve that kind of core with specific necessities of the church and so on. So that's how we, we are syncing the different um, initiatives of development of institutions 
and it has been growing in the kind of uh, meetings and conversations. Uh, in the past, we had we used to have a very independent initiative. Today, we have a, a good map of what is going on on the territory and understanding how I attack can be useful and all kind of initiative to integrate. For example, when we talk about data, the church has a huge interest on using data to, to make decisions. And now we, we are working on a data lake project and all these kind of initiatives, even the legacy of software that we have are feeding this, this lake. So we cannot have the risk of having good initiatives, very independent or so independent that it doesn't connect with the lake, for example. It's a kind of loss of data and it's not a strat strategic for the church. So iTech must be friendly enough to invite this independent group to make part, part of this big project as a big data project. And iTech must be a good reference to provide a technological reference, let's say like that, to integration and, and sustainability and so on. So that's, that's the main points where we are working right now to improve this profile of institution, to be more useful and to do not stop good initiative, local initiatives, uh, like saying IATEC is going to develop everything because it's not the, the point, it's not our mission. Our, we have a support mission. So sometimes it's developing our support. Sometimes it's consulting, sometimes it's integrating, sometimes it's providing a reference, exactly. uh, uh, the home of technology solutions. Yes. Uh, I, I like that very much. How many employees do you have at the moment? In Brazil, 291. And in Bolivia, 26, if I'm not wrong, and 10 in Peru. So you're approaching 300 and 300, between 300, 350 employees. Yes, yes. There is nowhere else in the Adventist church anywhere in the world that has a vision for technology that encompasses this operation. Mm -hmm. And not only do you have the personnel, you also have the experience over the last seven years or so, or maybe more, in approaching things. You've made enough mistakes sure. that you have, a, let's say you have a catalog of mistakes you're not going to make again. <laughs> which is a very important resource, yes. right? As you try to innovate and what have you. It is clear to many people in the world that IATEC may play a role in the world church finishing its mission. Is that something that you guys are open for? Do you find a culture of trying to help other places? Or is it the case, look, we have our own complexities. The rest of the world can find their own solutions if they want to. No, I think it's not uh, like, yeah, you have your own problems and so on. For us, it's uh, step by step becoming more clear uh, how I attack can help the church, the global church. Because sometimes it's not clear because it's not very uh, defined. The, the problems are not very defined for us. And sometimes... Uh, we, we do have our own pro problems and so on on South America division. But we are right now in an international summit hosted by IATEC. And we are feeling it's very clear the intention of the church to become more collaborative, especially on IT. And that's the, the main theme of this summit. And it's amazing. It is amazing for us. We didn't figure out exactly how we can make part of this and how can we can be useful on this. But 
Of course, we are open to understand necessities, to measure our possibilities of helping, to put our hands available for the church and talk about that because uh, I have to say that talking about that is something good and new because we, we are always talking about that kind of necessity, about this dream of having a collaborative environment regarding IT in the world, but now we are seeing some initiatives and it's interesting. I can't say what's gonna happen in the next month, next year. I don't know, but I've seen a lot of good plans and I've seen IA Tech on that plans. I can visualize IA Tech collaborating with another countries, another teams and being useful. And of course, we are here for that. We are here for, to serve the church. Okay, South America division is more clear for us what we have to do, but what else God is reserving for us as an institution, I don't know yet, but we are here to serve. What an exciting future this could be. What I hear you saying is you're looking at the general conference, the world church and saying, hey, you can have what you want, but you need to know what it is. So there's a, a, a long road of defining what the needs are for the local for the, the the local churches all around the world mm -hmm. uh the the local fields the local divisions and and all of the needs the world is very large yes and and solutions in order for them to be simple to the end user somebody needs to absorb the complexities uh of of delivering that and and that's a that's not a trivial task mm -hmm. um okay Last question, Beto, for you uh, in this episode, and we're very thankful for your time. It's my pleasure. Uh, being here. How do you think the use of technology will help us finish this mission that we're given? It's an obvious question. Yes, we should use technology. But beyond the cliche, you know, this is your life. Mm -hmm. Right. You've decided to dedicate your life to using technology to fulfilling this mission. You wake up with this. You go to bed with this every day for years. Yes. How do Almost you see 30 this? 30 years. Yeah, exactly. 27 years. Right. 27 years of this drive. Well, it's a. It's a deep question for me. And I would answer starting to say first we must simplify as much as we can the operations in our offices in our you know in our structures to save energy and money for the front of the mission that's one of the the most fast perception that I have about technology. Simplify the processes of the church, you know, to save energy resources for the front. It's the Very first interesting. one. The second. So, so if the operation is, is, is too complex. Yes. Or the simpler the operation. And expensive. The more resources will go to the front lines where evangelism happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, love it. Second. Second. As we do that, we also can have those minds and those resources on IT pointed to see the necessities of the church, the problems of the church, and create solutions. Sometimes we receive problems, the solution in the text, and so can you digitalize this solution that I made for this problem? And this is a kind of approach. But when I think about IT and IT people 
as we are able to connect those people to the mission, for them to see the mission. And then I deliver problems, not solution in a text. And I ask, what kind of solution can come from technology for this problem? And I let those people work. I think I'll have good surprises. And that's how technology can uh, fulfill some, some gaps of mission that we have. Because I truly believe that we have a generation with creativity. And, and if we have those people connected with the, the mission, understanding the necessities of the mission, we may have some surprises. There is. You're, you're describing the tip of the iceberg, but I know I can, I can sense the frustration underneath it. And it, it's a very hard conversation, Beto, because I tell my wife, you can tell me to do the dishes, but don't tell me how. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes. It's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the dishes, but stop telling me that I need to put the hot water first and then I need to do this and I need to do that. No, I'm going to decide how I'm going to do this. So your outcry seems to be, look, don't just come to the technology people with the solutions you think is right. Just give us a very clear problem and let us try and come up with solutions that you will see, uh, and you can be part of that process, but we will all see the solution maybe much better than yes, coming yes. with it already. Of course. The church has the guard rails for many things, and it's in my perspective, in my opinion, it is correct because we have men praying and getting ready to lead this church. It's okay to have guardrails, but sometimes I think uh, we can deliver, set free ideas and projects coming from people, uh, technical people, that might surprises us. I've seen that happening here on IA Tech. We have young people here having incredible ideas, incredible um, solutions for problems. And they need leadership. They need very often north, you know, to navigate. But they have ideas in the most special, they have a potential that pastor, uh, that's how I think God is preparing a, an army on technology to fulfill the mission. I love it. As you can see, the event is just finished. We're here recording and I think this is our time. Beto, I want to thank you so much for your vision. My pleasure. Thank I want to thank you for, thank you for the work of your team here. And if you've been watching this, it's because you probably like technology as well. Please feel free to write the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, ask your questions to Beto. I'm sure he's going to be able to answer those questions in this episode. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this on wherever podcast platform that you like listening to, we hope that we will connect again next week with another episode of ANN In Depth.